So what I want to do in this video is to add some functionality to Vector2 by modifying go.source code. So in Vector2, there is a function which is called normalized. And what this function do is to copy this vector to another vector and then normalize the vector and return that copied vector. In another word, this function is not going to touch the original vector. It is going to create a new vector. So I want to create a function to remove the copying process. So this operation would be faster. And as you can see here, I already created a new function which is called normalize without the ending D. And this function normalizes my vector without copying that. And in the rest of this video, I'm going to show you how you can do that with modifying source code. Next thing that I want to do is to create another function which reverse the direction of my vector2. And it is called reverse. This is a really trivial thing to do, but I want to show you how you can modify source code up to your need. This method which I will show you can be applied to other classes similar to vector2. And one thing to note is that I already created a video about how to modify scene classes. Please watch that first if you didn't watch that. Anyway. Modifying core classes like Victor2 is not like modifying scene classes, and it is a little bit different. And because there is no documentation about these kind of things, it took me a lot of time to understand that. Please guys, if you like this kind of content, please support my channel. I mean like my video and subscribe to my channel and smash the bell icon. This small thing will help me to create more this kind of content for you guys. So this is a Goda source code, which I downloaded from GitHub. The first thing to do is to find Vector2 class. You can find this class inside core folder and inside math folder. Here in the math folder, there are two files which one of them is called Vector2.h and one other is called Vector2.cpp. So I open Vector2.h inside VS Code and let's find normalized function and see what it does. So this is normalized function and let's take a look at its definition. As you can see here, this is going to copy the content of the vector into the newly created vector and call function normalize without D at the end. And this is going to normalize that newly created vector. And if you look at the function normalize, you can see it does what we need. But the problem is that it is not accessible inside GD script. So what we need to do is to expose this function in GDScript. And this was the thing that took me a lot of time. Because normally most classes in Godot have a function which is called underscore bind method. And you can easily bind your method there and it will be shown in the GDScript. But here there is nothing. So first let's create our reverse function. Then I will tell you how you can bind this method so it will be shown inside GDScript. In vector2 header file, first we are going to declare our function. And then here I'm going to define it. So the only thing that this function need to do is to multiply x and y to minus 1. And that is done. Well, now we need to bind this method so we can access them inside GT script. Well, in fact, because you access Vector2 through a variant class inside GDScript, it seems the variant class is responsible to bind this method. If you go inside core folder and then go inside variant folder, you can find a file which is called variant underscore call.cpp. Open that file and inside this file, there is a static method which is called register variant built-in method. As, as you can see, this is the place for binding our method. Just scroll down and you will find place where vector2 method are binded. Here I first bind normalize function and then I bind reverse function which I created. So it's done. There is two other argument inside bind method function. One of them is called sarray and other one is called varray. So sarray is for when your function has some input. And VRA is the default value of those input. Here we don't have any input, so we leave them empty like this. And finally, we should compile Godot. And after we're done, if you open Godot, you will have those functions that we have binded. If you like this kind of content, let me know. And if you have any suggestion for new content, also let me know. Thank you for watching. 
एंड गुड बाय